National Anthem. Not a bad tune, I suppose. But like that, it does sound a bit bare and empty. On the other hand... becomes a real piece of music. We've added harmonies to our melody. And harmony is the final tool we use after rhythm and melody. Harmony adds color and depth to music. And harmony is the playing of several notes at the same time. But it has to be, obviously, the right notes in the right combination to make a really pleasant sound. I suppose the piano is probably the best way of demonstrating harmony because it can play many notes at the same time. On the other hand, the human voice can only sing one note at a time. So if we want to make harmony by singing, we have to have more than one person. It was probably by singing together like this that the notion of harmony in its most simple form first took shape. Certainly singing along with other people has always been one of the purest and most pleasing ways of making music. How did we discover harmony? How did we find out that by singing or performing more than one note at a time, we could make a very pleasant sound? Well, I like to think it might have begun in a place like this. Gorian chants have been sung for over a thousand years, generally in cavernous places where the voices hang on long after they finish singing. Listen to this chant and hear what happens to the last notes of a phrase as they echo round the church. Because of the echo, we can hear not only the last note, but the note before that, or even the one before that. just one, but maybe two or even three notes, all at the same time. And this is the beginning of harmony. singing or playing different notes simultaneously is a fundamental part of music, be it the simplicity of plain chant or of this. Will you be loved, another man? When I return, will you be waiting? Oh, will you be loved, another man? One of the characteristics of this form of American country music, bluegrass, is the tightness of the harmony. Listen to the way the chorus gets a lift from the additional voices singing different notes. Bluegrass and country music has a very distinctive sound. Uh, the harmony part is on the top or the bottom. It tends to follow the lead very closely. And, and groups pride themselves on keeping that very, very tight 
that very, very tight, tight harmony. And it's a very distinctive sound and a very strong sound when it's done well. It's a, it's a very powerful thing. I think that's what attracts a lot of people to the sound of country music. Will you be loved another man? Will you be loved another man? When I return to you, be waiting. Oh, you be loved another man? Well, I'd like you to show me how vocals work in country music, OK? OK. So, will you just play, first of all, something just by yourself, just one voice? I walked out one night for a playing around I didn't mean to stay, just to view the town I saw her smiling from afar And she won't be too that cross now let's have two voices. Are you going to join in with him? You betcha. Okay. Second. I walked out one night for a ramble round. I didn't mean to stay just to view the town. I saw her smiling from afar. And she walked into that crossroads bar. Well, you don't find those kind of notes in, in rock and roll. <laughs> 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 okay. Now let's hear all voices, three, three voices together. Okay. I walked out one night, do ramble round. I didn't mean to stay just to view the town. I saw her smiling from afar. And as harmony adds colour to a piece of music, it also helps determine its mood. With a harmony, if you hear straight away, you know that you're going to be in some kind of world that's going to have to do with cheerful, cheerfully sort of things. It establishes tenor. Right away. There it is. Or. Wherever it's going to be in a more somber mood. We might be introduced into a very agitando. opera type yeah. chord we call the diminished chord yeah. or perhaps a mystical sort of world for me an orchestra is the most interesting way to explore harmony the different sounds of the instruments offer the composer different textures This piece will be pleasing enough, though sparse and perhaps lacking character. But when we add a few simple chords, the mood becomes altogether clearer. we talk about one harmony being more pleasing than another, it isn't as clear-cut as it seems. For example, this. A pleasing collection of sounds. But this, that sounds wrong. It's a dissonance. But dissonances have their place in music too. Listen again to the same chord. It seems that we like harmonies that are dissonant as well as those that are consonant. It's a means of getting together. It's just like when two people get together and you somehow know within a few minutes whether this is a consonant or dissonant relationship or a meeting, consonant meeting or a dissonant meeting. But it's still, it's, 
regardless of what it is, whether it's consonant or dissonant, it's still a relationship of some kind. And music sort of affirms that. So if you were, like when you sing this note, da, and I sing da, it's a very dissonant relationship, but it's needed. It's needed. Do you know the, the, the opening of the second half of the Rite of Spring? There's a D minor chord in the middle. I don't remember the instruments that are playing, but they hold this chord. And then around that chord is an E flat chord. Whatever, whatever it is. And then there's another chord under it. So you've got this D minor chord in the middle, and then you've got these other chords on top. It gives this a most amazing sound. I don't know if you can sort of hear the opening of the second half of uh, the Rite of Spring, but that's what it is, you know. And um, absolutely, absolutely wonderful and phenomenal in, in the way it sort of gets inside you and moves you around. And, so a harmony sets a mood, but harmony observes the way we are feeling. And as we have dared to look at our own feelings more precisely, more exactly, we've discovered we most of us don't feel just happy or sad or anxious. We feel some sort of mixture of all of these feelings, happy, sad, anxious, wondering, oh my gosh. Harmonies move toward that understanding of what for each one is the sort of furthest frontier of what we dare imagine and what we can accept. Harmony isn't just adding chords to a tune. In that piece by Stravinsky that Bobby McFillin liked, there's no real tune. It's just a series of chords. Harmony is its sole component, but it's still very effective. But harmony can give a sense of melody to a, a tune that otherwise has little character of its own. Listen to the melody without the chords and see if it um, moves you at all. Not the, it's the it's not set me on fire, but put it with the chords. stuff that's going on underneath that most people may not notice but that really is doing all the work I think because the melody is easy to hear but the harmony is all those people that you know when, when somebody goes up on stage and they collect their Oscar or their Grammy and they thank all those people well the harmony is all those other people that they're thanking because they really did it very often a composer will start not with a melody but with a very characteristic harmony Chopin, for example, mm -hmm. starts with this harmony. Don't know really where you are in that, do you? And then across it, he stretches this melody. works is that the piece is really in a sad key minor A, but it's being begun in a major chord in a unique position, which creates this, where are we? Just where are we now? Shine up my life. That's why I'll always be mine. The 
journey that a melody takes is crucial to its effect. The harmonies are the signposts of that journey, providing the reason for the melody to change key or tempo or even direction. I love this song, there, but it's also one of the songs where you go somewhere different in the middle. The, the harmonies take you to another place, and then you come back again. You, you're making a journey. You know, it was a, well, it was a challenge for me to. I mean, I knew the melody that I wanted, and then, and I, you know, with having the chord, you know, I know what I'm going to do. Playing a B, and then put the E in the bass, and the G flat on the top, and then the E flat minor, and then the A flat in the bass with the F, and then the right hand. And kind of, but, it was just, you know, trying to get a, um, it just happened with the melody. <laughs> and then when you go to the middle, though, you go out of there. <laughs> consists of chords being played against the melody. But harmony can also occur when one musical line is played against another in the form of a company. This is the first song I wrote. It was, it was when I woke up late this morning, my head was in a world. So whilst this was going down, I was going, dun, 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 dun. I've always loved that, going against the thing. Um, and so this is the same thing in Lady Madonna. It's like a boogie line, but then you get in the, in the bass, but then you do this. So you go. has the power to take you back instantly, be it five years ago or 50 years ago. Indeed, much of our response to music comes from reliving memories, things we've done, people we've met, places we've seen. I first saw the New York skyline as a boy of 18 when I came here in the Second World War. And as we docked in New York, I heard the sounds of a Marine band playing Sousa marches. And quickly that turned to it was so exciting. To me, a boy of 18, it was paradise. And it seemed as though the whole city was full of great music. As I made my way through the streets, I could hear music coming at me from all sides. It was the most exciting place I'd ever been to, and it sounded as though the whole city was full of great music. It still is. Life is there. Life is there. 
I find it somewhat ironic that in this city, one of the busiest and most sophisticated in the world, one can find music in its purest form. Four voices in perfect harmony. As the Lord above, We often think of music as a language, but it does seem to me that some of us are born with the ability to speak it better than others. And this is something a lot of people don't understand, natural harmony, and that is the capacity to sing without even thinking about where you're going, where you hear a melody and then you, you just fall into the harmony. So that if, you hear, yeah. if you hear somebody else's song, yeah. And you want to sing it, you naturally would know where you're going to go, which, yeah. which parts each of mm. you are going to sing. In a basic three bar harmonies, yeah. yeah. Well, even with the Every Brothers early records, we just added the third harmony. Really? Because it was sounded nicer. What kind of stuff reason. are you talking about? Hang on. Do a bit of bye bye love. Three. Bye bye love. <laughs> bye bye. Hello, loneliness. I think I'm gonna cry. Bye bye, love. Bye bye, sweet caress. Hello, emptiness. I think I'm gonna cry. I feel a bear on the hill. Singing around the sea. Oh, I'm singing every Even if we can't sing or play ourselves, we all understand the language of music, and we're conditioned from childhood to respond emotionally to certain harmonies. Oh, I happen to have Toodles here. Uh, this was a toy dog, much the worse for wear. You've had him uh, all your life? I've had him my whole life, and my dad used this dog to teach me to play the piano. And the first tune uh, my dad wrote was this little tune. This is Toodles, by the way, everybody. <laughs> At the first tune he wrote for Toodles was this little ditty that went. Like that. It's a doggy tune. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> and I would be sitting next to my dad or sitting on his lap, and he would say, now, look, let's make Toodles play the song. And he took Toodles like this and went. <laughs> so they, those were tone clusters, you know? <laughs> so from my earliest childhood, I associated <laughs> with happiness, well-being, my father's love, the you know, happy home side. It was very, this was a very different association. exactly the same way as language. Long, complex words confuse us. Short, simple words get the message across. Harmony singing like this needs to be simple and direct if it's to be effective, because the harmonies which most engage us are uncomplicated. Harmony is evolving continuously, becoming more complex with each generation. In Mozart's day, just 200 years ago, he would use perhaps only four or five chords in a piece and giving it a, a lovely purity of line. There's a kind of natural cleanliness about Mozart's music. And later on, the Romantics, with their new freedom of expression, would add more notes to the chords, making them more lush, richer, more sensual. And by the time he got to Ravel, he had the nerve to put 
two semitones together in the same chord. This kind of noise would be in a chord, and he would play something like this. Mozart's harmonies are from the classical era. Ravel's are romantic, but they're equally effective in setting the mood. Sometimes a single chord can tell us where the music's going. the power of harmony. Chords are, uh, can, can imply strength, they can imply passion. Uh, they can apply masculinity as well as femininity. But you, you put all these elements together and you've got a hormonal gasoline. Music is above all a language of emotion. And harmonies help to reveal the passions of the listener and the performer. I'd go to a party, and they were always, uh, you know, the boys were over here and the girls were over there, and the, the guy had, you know, really good hair or a sharp outfit on, or he had a nice car, or he had a, he knew how to dance better than I did, or um, he had a better line, you know, an intro line. Hey, blah blah blah. My name is Bobby, and blah blah blah. And I'd kind of wander out of the party room, and I'd go around the house, and I'd see a piano, and I'd sit down just by myself, and I'd start to play the piano, and just, I just sit there and. down into it and throw a little body language and I look up again and there was another girl and I think this stuff is great I didn't even have to talk this talk this spoke for me I remember a girl telling me on an airplane once that this is a real high compliment she had a couple of drinks and she said that she wasn't able to make love unless she had my music on that's pretty good you feel like you're just contributing to her love life. That's major, if she's telling the truth. <laughs> For nearly 70 years, filmmakers have used the way we react to certain harmonies to heighten our emotional response to their movies. Los Angeles, the home of the movie industry to the entire world. And when they started making movies at the beginning of this century, they were silent. And they used to employ a pianist in the cinema to play classical tunes to heighten the emotion of what people saw on the screen. And then in 1929, it all changed when Al Jolson sang for the first time on film in The Jazz Singer and talkies were born. And ever since then, music has been a fundamental part of telling the story in a movie. Hans Zimmer is one of the top film score composers in Hollywood. A few chords on a piece of film can have a dramatic effect. I don't know. Looks awful. I made did, made no, you no, instantly I, old. I, I, was, I was old, no. certainly, but I am old. But also, I was care. I was. You were caring about. I was probably the guy. collecting the ashes of my of my I know, lover. I know, I know. That's that's. <laughs> yeah, very no, sad. No, I've written uh, film yeah, scores myself, it was a major, it and was I know how harmonies course. can lead the audience to in the that. telling of a story. It's amazing what music can do. Of course, I mean, if you. Oh God, let's. If we made it a 
make it up. Okay, you can do something different, right? Uh, let's, 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 let's... Let's try to really ruin your career for good. <laughs> well, what if it was? He wasn't collecting the ashes this time, was he? <laughs> I made a fool out of you. <laughs> yeah, I made a fool out of me. Okay. I don't know. I mean, it's not very yeah. difficult. No, it's it's it's. Look, I, I can get, keep going at this, you know, till the cows come home and, and, and give you different stories each time. And the story isn't told now by the pictures. The to story is told by the music. When we met Hans, he was in the early stages of writing some harmonically based music for a new film called Peacemaker. With any sequence, he begins by examining the story. It's basically a robbery. It's um, one train usurping the other, you know, with bad guys on it, and they're trying to steal something off the other train. And what I thought needed to happen... I mean, they're very cinematic moments. I mean, these guys with those funny red eyes, you know. They're uh, quite sinister. It's very sinister, you know. And, and so, you, you know, you want to sort of enhance the sinisterness of it, but at the same time, you do want to give it a bit of speed. At the moment, you all you've got is a bit of actual live effect. Right, all I have is a little bit of rumbling going on, you know, and lights going off. And, and part of what, what's good about the tension of the scene is that there is so little happening. He helps to build the suspense by using a relentless rhythm combined with a series of sinister chords. Harmony alone reinforces the tension. trying to do is I mean they're just shots of trains and I'm trying to build build towards this towards something you know and I'm hitting these cuts very hard and there's there's a rhythmic element which of course comes from the trains and at the same time there's this, this sort of watch this sort of mystery stuff sort of slithering on top actually pretty unpleasant but I think that's just fine has been described as the clothing of music. It's a metaphor which holds true for film as well, the harmony adding another layer of information to the pictures. to the choral harmonies of 16th century church music, Palestrina, for example, we are aware of a gentle, flowing music that results from the changing of one note at a time in each of the vocal parts, in effect creating a seamless progression of harmonies. Later, Bach took this immeasurably further. He realized that harmonic lines didn't have to move together. They could go in different directions, and they didn't have to follow the same rhythms as the music they were accompanying. Both Bach and Palestrina were working composers whose jobs were to provide music for the societies in which they lived, the court and the church. And we can still see this close connection between harmony 
and community. This is Montserrat, a small island in the Caribbean. Here you'll find all the social functions of music in one place. Music here is a fundamental part of life. It's part of the rhythm of their lives, and almost everyone is bound up in it. In Montserrat, you'll find music everywhere. In the marketplace, in churches, on the beach. From all sorts of bands, choirs, steel drums, guitar players. And of course, of all the forms of music, the most widely known is that that we call Calypso. When music is such an integral part of a society, it becomes very natural for people to sing and play in harmony. To me, that's what makes music here so attractive. I first came here in the early 70s and immediately fell in love with the place. I built a recording studio here a place for musicians to get away from it all and work without interruption. Many of the most famous names in popular music have made albums here. Sting, Elton John, Eric Clapton. Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder recorded Ebony and Ivory here. And I remember seeing Stevie in the studio, sitting at a synthesizer there, while Paul was on his Bosendorfer, just over here. These two great multi-talented musicians. They could, both of them, play almost every instrument you can think of. But when they worked together, there was a great synergy, a great electricity between them. Electric magic. And they made such a lovely sound together. And of course, the song was very appropriate, too. Ebony and Ivory. Like the keys on my piano keyboard, side by side, in perfect harmony. It's market day in the town today, bring you money and coal. Mule and donkey come down today, bring you money and coal. Sweet potato. Music here is used to celebrate details of everyday activities, from fishing to the harvest to the marketplace. Bring you money and coal. It ain't have a beat, the butcher trying to start with it. No meat, the butcher think I eat one for it. Best go buy some fish or butcher you never heard. No bad or he, the butcher ain't him no meat. We, we work at our harmony because we don't just want to achieve the very ordinary type of harmonies. We want to achieve harmonies which sort of grab the ears and then grab the heart and grab the mind and which cause people to think. Let's hear that again, you know? <laughs> harmonies which perhaps work, um, work themselves out not in strict patterns and perhaps surprise and challenge a little bit. If you don't want to live for Lord, you know him. Go for your land and plants you own, you know him. From the deep of all, me dear, dog dig of all, me dear. Dig up your land and plants you own, you know him. In the last couple of years, Montserrat has suffered disastrously from a violent volcano. Again, music plays its part, 
as the volcano finds its way into song, and in turn, the island's history. Another explosion in the night. Everyone tremble with fright. Keep the faith, don't lose your mind. Let's go on, one day at a time. Another ash cloud rises high. Equips your soul, darkens the sky. This community, despite all its problems, has a pace of life that is more gentle than the modern urban environments in which much of today's music comes. The distractions are fewer, and it shows in their music. Similarly, in the societies of Mozart and Bach, there was less competition for attention. The listener had more time to absorb the music. I'm sure there is a connection between our response to music, the way it touches us, and the kind of life we live. Many years ago, John Lennon and I spent an evening together in London, in my flat, and I played a lot of music to him. And I played a, an orchestral piece by Ravel, which is one of my favourites, the Daphne and Chloe Suite. It's quite a long piece, but he listened to it very patiently. And at the end, I said to him, what do you think of it, John? He said, well, it's, it's great, but by the time I got to the end of the tune, I couldn't remember what the beginning was all about. He just couldn't get the hang of it. And I realized that he'd been conditioned all his life to short bursts of music, no longer than two minutes at a time. These days, we're all subjected to very short music in sound bites on television advertising and so on. And perhaps we are in danger of only listening to the things that we know and ignoring the rest. We do this at our peril, because whether or not we like a particular sound, music has always reflected how the musician feels. So we should listen, even when it means taking on a totally new form of expression. Here we go, let us start from the top. A young woman's is on a roll. I'm talking about living and breathing and what the Lord God has given him. I give this coming straight from the soul, but still the young brother is living. Still a bit dark, but aware of the part laid out. Rap music is one of the musical languages of our time, just as Mozart's music was one of the musical languages of the 18th century. There is, however, one big difference. The computer. I tend to write more complicated and more challenging things with the computer, and when I have it running, then it's actually taking care of all that harmony. So it also beefs up the sound of the band. It's a kind of basic framework for you. Yeah, right? it's the framework you, of the whole band sound. And then you're playing live on top of that. Yes. Mm. Well, what have we got here? What's all this? Okay, um... This is a sampler here. A um, sampler that has yeah. sounds on it, doesn't it? Yeah, you sample sounds. You pick, you know, you bite sounds from right. various places or whatever. Drum sounds, all inside here. That's a monitor for my sampler. Mm -hmm. It's my computer running a sequencer program, so the space... And that has all the stuff in it? Yeah, that's like your, your studio there. The computer in music has two main functional recordings, and it can become another musician, sometimes able to play oh, yeah, beyond the capabilities of a human being. Yeah, and also, it makes available a whole range of synthetic sounds. Um, basically, you're recording in sections, so you record yeah. like a, a section of a track right. on... The, on different tracks and that's your section and then you can move the sections around and arrange the song and, and that, yeah, you can actually see it. That forms the complete basis of your music. Yeah. Mm. There's an irony here. 
Despite the technology involved in a lot of today's music, much of the feel of it has returned to where we started, rhythm. Except that instead of a man banging on a drum, we now have a computer. Modern music doesn't let us forget the primitive musical traditions we used to have in our society. So does that mean we've exhausted all the possibilities of original composition? I'm sure we haven't. This century, the world has changed more quickly than ever before in a race of technological progress. Today's music echoes that. I'm still aware that there are many people who are wanting to get back to acoustic roots. And maybe there's a growing movement, unplugged records, a growing movement for people to return to what music used to be 30 or 40 years ago. I certainly wouldn't be too unhappy if we got a little bit less synthesizer and computer mad and started relying upon the human heart to tell the musical story. Feel the pain in my heart. Mm. Feel the pain in my soul. Mm. And I just can't believe But I can't resist your love For thousands of years we've been arranging sounds in a way that is both intelligible and pleasing to us. And the impulse to make and enjoy music has a great deal to do with the way we're wired together. Feel the pain in my heart Every society on earth has come up with a, a simple form of music which reflects the basic activities of their lives before moving on to a more elaborate form of music which reflects the increasing complexity of life. We have music because we need it. It is a long developing part of human nature. It's an essential tool in our endless desire for communication and it's as natural to us as speech itself it is the rhythm of life <laughs> 